Welcome to 15th lecture of video course on Tribology. Topic of today's lecture is lubricant classification. In previous lecture, we studied hydronomic lubrication and figure out that viscosity is one of the important parameter for the lubrication, but it is not necessary for all kind of lubricants. Viscosity is very important for liquid lubricants. There are other kind of lubricants which we are going to explore today that is why the topic name is a lubricant classification. Very common sense says that lubricant can be classified based on their molecular structure, strength between the molecule uh, attraction or we say the overall attraction force between the molecules. We know very well in uh, gases state molecules are uh, distant or uh, not very attached to each other. However, in liquid case attraction force is more they come closer or we say the particle density is more. In case of a solid particle density is maximum compared to liquid and compared to the gases. So, based on this uh, molecular structure this kind of molecular structure we can divide lubricant in gases lubricant, liquid lubricant and solid lubricant. But in addition to that we have one more classification what we call the semi lubricant or semi solid lubricants where they have a state in between liquid and solid. They have a flowability, but they show initial some resistance that is why we say lubricant can be classified as a gases lubricants as a liquid lubricants, semi solid lubricant and solid lubricant. Every lubricant has its own characteristics. They are preferred in different situations, maybe gases lubricant which have a very low viscosity, lot of gap between the molecular um, between the molecules that will give very very low resistance against the flow. In that case the coefficient of friction will be very low, but because of their molecular structure they are not able to sustain much load that means, they can be used only or uh, this kind of lubricant can be used for very very low load applications. While the solid lubricant they can restrict they can sustain very huge amount of the load they will not be getting squeezed out. So, they have more application when the load is very high. So, in extreme cases of the load and extreme cases of the speed we need to choose a proper lubricant. But before that, let us see what is the importance of the lubrication. It has been realized in one way or another way lubricants are very important, but we have one uh, table. Um, it says that uh, wear control handbook it has been picked up from the wear control handbook reference has been uh, defined or given on this table and this says that comparison between hydronomic lubrication and squeeze film lubrication will be exploring what is the squeeze film lubrication in our next module. Elastohydrone lubrication, boundary lubrication, solid lubricant and unlubricated. Unlubricated does not mean that it is not lubricated there is a possibility of the natural oxides on the surface, but we are emphasizing that we are not doing anything intentionally. No lubricant intentionally has been uh, supplied or applied on interface. So, when we compare uh, wear rate between unlubricated case and uh, solid lubricated case what we get almost a difference of 100. If I say wear rate is 100 units for unlubricated case we may reduce this lubricate uh, wear with the solid lubricant to the 1 percent of that the huge difference also the component life can be increased by 100 times by properly choosing solid lubricant does not mean that all solid lubricant will be very good at the every interface there is a need of a compatibility between the solid lubricant and uh, metal on which they have been applied or polymers or uh, uh, ceramics on uh, at which interface they are being applied. Similarly, when we compare boundary lubrication and elastohydronomic lubrication what we find there is a huge difference. Boundary lubrication if I assume the 100 x the 100 units 
we are going to get a much lesser wear rate maybe say 0.1 x as a 0.1 percent on the boundary lubricants, but there is a huge difference here also what we are talking of the boundary lubricant and we are talking of the solid lubricant they both have same almost same film thickness at the interface solid lubricant they are very strict attached properly to the surface boundary lubricants they require a carrier fluid to flow but detachment and attachment will be a continuous process while in case of the solid lubricants many times if once they are attached detached from the surface <coughs> it will be difficult to again attach that that is why wear rate may be initially moderate or low if uh, solid lubricant is removed from the surface wear rate will increase on, on average wear rate with a solid lubricant will be higher compared to the boundary lubricant because we have learned the physics of uh, uh, these mechanisms. So, we can use solid lubricant as a boundary lubricant we can use a carrier fluid with a solid lubricant and that is one of the uh, most commonly used uh, one of the so, uh, solid lubricant as a molybdenum disulfide it has been mixed with the lubricant it has been mixed with the greases. So, that grease and the liquid lubricant they act as a carrier fluid and wherever it is uh, required solid lubricant or uh, lubricant film is required solid lubricant or molybdenum disulfide is occupied or the occupy that is space. Now, before starting the column lubricant classification it is important to understand uh, how to define the liquid lubricant or solid lubricant or any kind of lubricant. So, question comes uh, how to define lubricant. Many times when we drive a car on the sandy road we find um, car is slipping because of friction is very low. So, that should be advantages to us. I can say the sand is acting as a lubricant or sometime even the uh, surface is uneven we get a more slope because of that lesser area of contact lesser friction we can say that in this case the gravels are also acting as a lubricant, but that is not the case when we talk about the travelogy when we understand the physics and understand the science of lubrication. We say lubricant can be def uh, defined based on the properties we say that lubricant needs to provide low, but constant and controllable friction. It is nothing like a sometime is uh, uh, the lubricant is providing 0.1 coefficient of friction sometime 0 0.5, 0 uh, uh, 6 uncontrollable coefficient of friction it should not happen and was most commonly happen with the sand or gravels they do not have any control coefficient of friction coefficient of friction continuously changes it is a lower than solid road, but uncontrolled we do not have much control on that coefficient of friction. We say that from that angle gravels or sand cannot be called as a lubricant. In addition to that we have a requirement it should not attack the tribal surface I take in the sense um, majorly maybe at the nominal or um, very low level is fine, but at the majorly which is visible that should not happen or substance which is going to attack the surface severely or which can be easily quantified then in that case that will not be acting as a lubricant. So, first thing is that it should provide a controllable coefficient of friction second thing is that it should not damage the surface and finally, it should not be again and again uh, provided or there is a possibility of some lack of the lubricant any movement temporarily. So, we require strictness to the surface also it should not happen the momentarily there we are unable to supply the lubricant and then uh, system fails in that situation that lubricant should be having some adhesiveness with the surface. So, uh, lubricant can be uh, defined based on this it should provide a low coefficient of friction and controllable coefficient of friction. Second it should not damage the surface and third preferably it should attach the surface 
are attached to the surface. Now, we define the, we classify the soil, uh, lubricant as a solid lubricant, semi-solid lubricant, liquid lubricant and um, gases lubricant. All these are the very big groups. We will not be covering uh, everything in detail, but to some extent we will learn the classification. So, remaining of this uh, lecture will be understanding classification of the solid lubricants. So, solid lubricant they are basically materials of which are having solid state and they show a low coefficient of friction or low shear strength. So, we can say that solid lubricant any solid material which can be placed between tribopair surfaces and can be sheared more easily under a given load condition than tribo material themselves. That means, third substance being uh, used between the two materials or a tribo pair and it should be easily shared. Now, if I go back to the our uh, original uh, Strybeck curve we define their boundary lubrication. It is interesting to note that solid lubrication also can be defined in the similar state. It follows more or less dry lubrication loss only the magnitude is decreased. You say that coefficient of friction in solid lubricant can be related to shear force and applied load. The Coulomb law can be used for this kind of uh, lubricants because they are act, uh, they are dry, they are not uh, liquefied, they do not have a flow prob uh, possibilities to a major extent, and that is why we can define using the Coulomb's law or based on even. Uh, Archer equation we can define the wear rate. Now, you say that boundary films are formed by interaction of the tribal surface with the solid lubricant. In the presence of solid lubricant and there will be uh, some mechanical rubbing because of the travelage is defined based on the mechanical rubbing. There is a possibility of a film of solid lubricant getting transferred to the materials in contact. By and large that is a mechanism where it works. Before starting solid lubricant we want to explore what are the advantages and disadvantages when should we recommend the solid lubricants. First point comes uh, it is more effective than fluid lubricant, fluid may be liquid lubricant, gases lubricants and uh, grease also has um, flowability. So, I can define the grease also as a fluid. So, all three gases liquid and solid. So, uh, uh, liquid gases and semi solid, solid lubricants are better than that and those uh, lubricant are more effective than uh, those uh, lubricants particularly the high load conditions. Whenever the load is very high lubricant will try to get squeezed out from this interface and if there is a solid lubricant which has a more bonding strength with the surface will remain in contact. They will be more effective compared to liquid lubricant, compared to gases lubricant, compared to semi solid lubricant also. Second point uh, second advantage is mentioned over here is a high resistance to deterioration they do not get deteriorated, they do not get easily oxidized in uh, storage a common uh, space, they have relatively high temperature stability. Unless a vacuum is being created where the de they degas, they will try to vaporize. In uh, addition to that there is a third uh, advantage has been mentioned that it is a highly stable or the solid lubricants are highly stable even in a high temperature condition because they have high molecular attraction, their structure is more stable 
they can sustain more temperature compared to liquid lubricant, compared to gases lubricant or I, I can say the gases lubricant because gases lubricants um, have a much more uh, uh, better properties at the high temperature. They have a more uh, molecular uh, randomness and then they try to give more viscosity. So, the high temperature case gases lubricants are preferable, but solid lubricants are stable. They do not change uh, their molecular structure very easily at uh, moderate uh, temperature. They are stable against the radiation, they have uh, lesser chemical uh, activities that is why they are they can be used as the reactive environments. We talk about the nuclear uh, cases uh, solid lubricant will be preferable. Now, this uh, fourth advantage is really a very very big advantage as a main motive to promote solid lubricants. We say solid lubricant permit equipment to be lighter and simpler. Let us take an example of a liquid lubricant. Liquid lubricant need to be pumped. So, they require pump, they require pipelines, they require ceilings, they require some rings to tight. Overall system will turn out to be complex, many number of components are going to be involved and there is a possibility of the leakage also. So, that is why the last advantage has been mentioned, they have a cleanliness, solid lubricant can maintain the cleanliness, there will not be leakage of the liquid lubricant. So, they are better than liquid lubricant from that angle, even better than a semi solid lubricant like creases. They do not require too many equipments, once they have been coated on the surface for a certain duration, of course, so their life is not infinity. They get coated on the surface for some stipulated time. It is nothing like that once you coat the solid lubricant, apply a solid lubricant, use a solid lubricant block, it will last for the forever, have a finite life. However, in liquid lubricant we can say a liquid lubricant without any additives, uh, additive which is not going to get depleted, they can show or give a infinite life, which is also a very hypothetical case. They have a longer life than solid lubricants, but not infinite life. Now, coming to the disadvantages when uh, we should not recommend solid lubricant, that is one of the important thing is that they do not have a self healing properties. Any lubricant which does not have a self healing properties, one has been distorted from the surface, detached from the surface, solid lubricant cannot go back and uh, um, heal that uh, defect. So, where it will change? There will be transition, that is why there we say that in those situation wherever the more precision is required with the more reliability is required, either we should use a solid lubricant with the carrier fluids or some mechanism should be there, the self uh, some healing device is been uh, utilized with the solid lubricant. This says that a broken solid firm tends to shorten the useful life of lubricant. If we have designed a uh, solid lubricant for the 1000 hours and quite possible it shows only 10 hours, 12 hours, 15 hours. So, another uh, major disadvantage about uh, solid lubricant is that their thermal conductivity and uh, heat dissipation capabilities. They work only with the conduction, there is no convection. Radiation is a hardly uh, come into the picture. And conduction also if the we do not have any carrier fluid, we do not have any cooling agent or nearby or passing through uh, the device, then heat dissipation will be a difficult. What if the heat generated will be accumulated in the surface and will necessarily increase the temperature. But if there is a cooling devices available, cooling fluids are available which can cool the surface, then this kind of uh, solid lubricant can be recommended. But if there is uh, no uh, availability of uh, cooling uh, agents or cooling devices, then we should not recommend. Reason being that uh, solid lubricant already show high coefficient of friction compared to liquid lubricant uh, coefficient of friction. So heat generation will be more at the solid lubricant interface compared to liquid inter uh, interface. And in that case, 
uh, if uh, in addition to that there is uh, no provision to carry away the heat and the apply load is very high relative speed is very high then we should not uh, recommend a solid lubricant. Last uh, disadvantage has been mentioned over here is it has a high coefficient of friction and high wire rate. Now, wear rate is uh, one of the um, um, subjective thing in this case. We say the wear rate of the solid lubricant itself can be counted as the wear rate or sometime uh, people say that uh, wear rate of the material which come in interface. Here the coating has been applied or the solid uh, lubricant has been applied if it wears out then it going to give a condition as unlubricate condition the wear rate will increase. So, first the wear rate of the solid lubricant and subsequent the wear rate of the metal which are the under interface all will be high and of course, the coefficient of friction will be high because they have a high bonding strength with this interface and they do not show or do not give very low coefficient of friction low shear strength because of the solid structure or solid state they will have a higher shear strength compared to the liquid interface or a liquid state. I am uh, uh, showing starting a solid lubricant now we say that one way to uh, apply a solid lubricant or uh, pass a solid lubricant or supply so, uh, solid lubricant and interface is simply uh, brushing um, component with a solid lubricant or rubbing con component with a solid uh, solid uh, lubricant. Just to elaborate what I am trying to convey, I am showing the uh, two diagrams or two uh, photographs. This photographs both the photographs are the same uh, eccentric cam and uh, this eccentric cam has been uh, coated has been uh, rubbed with um, molybdenum disulfide uh, powder molybdenum disulfide powder is uh, somewhere in uh, lesser than 1 micron size. When we rub it we, we find a really a good shiny surface of the cam. When we operate this cam at the maybe say 60 rpm and the, the lab experiments after 3 hours of operation we find that complete molybdenum disulfide has been uh, removed from the surface. You can see the uh, one out the surface over here this one out surface clearly shows that there is no molybdenum disulfide it has been molybdenum disulfide has been removed from the surface. So, that is the major disadvantage we uh, use uh, operation we apply molybdenum disulfide and been removed. So, easiest way is that use some sort of carrier fluid with a molybdenum disulfide. Carrier fluid will be a continuous media to supply um, molybdenum disulfide at the interface and under high load condition they and relative condition they will, will keep depositing this kind of the coating and the surface where we say that coating will be applied and then removed applied and removed it will act like a boundary lubricants and the wear rate overall wear rate will be lower case. That is why we say the molybdenum disulfide can be mixed with the liquid lubricant can be mixed with the greases they will show up, uh, better performance. However, the problem comes to the filtration if uh, filter is a um, very low rating uh, we say that the beta rating is very low in that case and uh, the molybdenum disulfide also will get filter that means in that case we need to choose a proper filter. Now, there are two important requirements uh, which uh, uh, need to be there, there from a uh, solid lubricant we say that it should be uh, able to support the applied load it should not uh, tear away it should not happen that the structure of uh, solid lubricant get distorted. Many times we have uh, this kind of uh, um, we did a number of experiment we found the graphite happens to be getting distorted in the structure sometime it is a factor sometime it is not a factor under load high load condition. There should not be any significant distortion that is why that is mentioned over here deformation or loss in strength they should not have a creep behavior. Most of the polymers have the creep behavior if you apply a stress or maybe say 20 or 25 mega Pascal they will show a good performance initially and with the time the performance deteriorates because of the creep behavior they start flowing they will show the diff uh, different properties. So, as far as possible they should not lose a uh, uh, strength if uh, um, um, solid lubricants are losing its strength then we should not uh, use those lubricant for that kind of load we should use the, those lubricant at a lower slightly lower load or load which can uh, show without creep behavior. 
and second thing is that we need to choose a coefficient uh, solid lubricant as per the desirable coefficient of friction. Few solid lubricant show the coefficient of friction 0 0.05, few solid lubricant show the coefficient of friction 0 0.1, few solid lubricant 0 0.2 solid lubricant point 0.3. So, it depends on the condition, depends on the what kind of uh, coefficient of friction is desired. We should use coefficient of friction that way and similarly, we should use a rate of wear which is acceptably low. It should not happen that uh, we are designing component for the very high life and uh, we are choosing solid lubricant. The possibility of the wear and that will reduce the wear and this will uh, increase the uh, clearance and that may um, reduce the overall uh, service life or operating life of the component. Now, I mentioned uh, one way to uh, uh, give or uh, apply a solid lubricant on the material of the which are coming in the contact like a uh, cam, but there is another way we use a solid lubricant as a bonded coating. That means, they have some sort of binding agents with those binding agent we try to apply solid uh, lubricant. There are number of binding agent, what we call we can classify according to their uh, structure which is organic binder and inorganic binders. Organic binders generally have a temperature limit, they are particularly resins and uh, which are having sticky behavior. They lose their behavior at the temperature more than 300 degrees centigrade. That is why this kind of uh, coating or this kind of solid lubricant coating should be used of when the temp operating temperature obviously, the maximum temperature is lesser than 300 degrees centigrade. Otherwise, uh, the high temperature they will start liquefying, will start flowing and the solid lubricant will not stick that will not remain effective, but if the operating temperature is lesser than 300 centigrade then we can use a resin based uh, binders and um, uh, we can uh, apply or we can uh, stick uh, solid lubricant to the components where the they are desired. Similarly, we have inorganic binders here the metal comp uh, metal uh, composition comes into picture sometimes we use the ceramics also or we use a mixture of the all. They remain stable at the higher temperature the temperature we can even uh, reach up to 650 degree centigrade which is quite huge and the most of the tribo interfaces and they are effective this kind of binders are effective at the 650 degree centigrade. Of course, the research keep uh, is, uh, is always on and may people make uh, resin binders which are operating can be operated at 350 degree centigrade, 400 degree centigrade, but still that is a research. Um, um, from a from research point of view, not from a commercial point of view. What is been mentioned here is the more common which is available in market. Now, uh, when we have uh, this kind of binder uh, mix uh, pigments, uh, what we say that uh, solid lubricant as a pigment and then a binding agent. So, that can be applied or um, on the surface by spring having some velocity you impinge at the some velocity which will make a undulated surface and again uh, deposit the solid lubricant on the surface. So, another one is that if they have a chemical uh, um, some potential in that case uh, the dipping will also help. However, uh, there is also a possibility that we can brush it and mechanically when the uh, solid lubricant mix with the uh, component is run under uh, mechanical condition brushing condition for maybe a couple of hours maybe 3 hours 5 hours and all component will get coated is ammonium disulfide is also um, deposited on interface uh, by using this kind of coatings this kind of methods. We say that uh, spraying is one of the common technique it can be thermal spray or it can be using the velocity guns the spray is a very commonly used technique while dipping is a uh, less expensive. So, when we do not have a uh, extensive uh, number of components. So, we are uh, trying to use initially to more experiment we can use a dipping only thing is that that uh, solid lubricant need to be mixed properly with a uh, fluid. Now, few uh, notes a few conclusions uh, based on what we have mentioned in this uh, can be stated. So, that to apply solid lubricant as a coating form we required a good surface preparation. 
some irregularity on the surface will help us to easy depositing, uh, depositing the solid lubricant on the surface. So, that is why most oftenly we use emery paper to uh, rub the surface make a slightly irregular surface and then uh, apply solid lubricant on the surface. So, surface preparation is important. Now, utility of the uh, emery paper rubbing uh, can be said in number of ways. One is that it is giving a slightly rough surface another thing is that it is removing the contaminations from the surface. We know if there is a contamination on the surface then uh, adhesiveness between the solid lubricant and the parent material will not be that much because in contamination generally have a low shear strain and then the, the, uh, adhes uh, that bonding will be reduced. It will remove uh, or uh, if we uh, rub with emery paper it is going to remove the contamination to some extent and of course, if we keep again after rubbing for a number of hours again the oxide layer will be formed it will not be factors that means, uh, rubbing as well as uh, immediately after that uh, deposition of the solid lubricant will help. Sometime uh, we use a uh, temperature coating like we are talking about the resin based or we are talking about the binders um, uh, to be mixed with the pigment naturally cooling or um, particularly curing is important in that si those situation. It can be air cured uh, allow uh, temperature to fall as uh, per the environment or other one is a controlled one that is what we call the heat cured coatings. Heat cured coatings means uh, we control regulated the maybe say the 500 uh, degree centigrade for some temperature. Uh, so, five for some hours then 300 for some hours. So, that it gives a very stable uh, coating on the surface. So, what we can say the heat cured coating can will last longer compared to the air uh, cured coating and of course, the uh, air cured, cured coating will be better than uh, no curing surface. If you apply a coating on the surface and immediately use it will not be that much stable, but if it does a cure properly then it will be having more and more stability. Now, we can classify solid lubricants based on uh, their molecular structure. We say that easiest one is a polymer, we have a lesser chemical uh, reactivity, but they have a low melting temperature. Then we have uh, some metals in solid form. We are using the word solid metal solid because we know very well the metals also can be used a liquid uh, lubricant as a liquid lubricant when the melting uh, or the operating temperature is very high and the metal really flows. So, we do not uh, we want do not want to mix these together we say that in this case we are particularly using metal in solid form. And finally, comes the cermet, cermets are generally a mixture of ceramics and metals, metals are used as the binders for a ceramic material and we know the ceramic materials um, have a very high temperature um, high melting temperature and this kind of composition can be used for the high temperature applications. We have found number of applications or I think we have seen uh, the uh, number of application of the solid lubricant it may be a uh, number of bushes you see the washing machine you see the any uh, juicer mixture we find uh, this kind of bushings uh, polymer bushings uh, um, they you act as a solid lubricant in them. They do the dual purpose uh, they support the shaft rotating shaft and they support uh, they also use as a lubricant there both the sources together. We have seen also as a separator in the rolling element bearings. Rolling element bearings we have inner ring and outer ring and then the separator along with rolling elements. We, if we do not use a separator what will happen all the rolling element will can club together at one place and they will uh, show high load carrying capacity of the 180 degree and remaining 180 degree it will not show any load carrying capacity. So, we required proper control uh, load carrying capacity and control friction that is why we use uh, cages or uh, separator that is why we are writing here this it can be used or the, this kind of uh, solid lubricant can be used with the cages. It can be a polymer based complete one or it can be uh, some sort of um, a bronze base, but with a solid lubricant applied or solid lubricant coating applied on that. Heard about um, electrical brushes uh, generally they are carbon based or graphite based or carbon graphite mixture they use as one block uh, lubricant. 
I am just showing uh, one uh, example uh, which we have done in our laboratory is, uh, is, a, carb uh, is a graphite seal ring. Now, what is the disadvantage of uh, this kind of uh, rings? Advantage is the number, the huge number. So, uh, this seal is used to stop the steam leakage. Uh, steam itself is, is a high temperature uh, fluid. And we are talking about the saturated steam is 120 degree, 130 degree, 150 degree centigrade. So, we required a um, seal which also gets self lubricated. When we talk about the self lubricated, naturally the question comes to whether they have a sol uh, solid lubricant along with the uh, other composition. Maybe in this case it is a mix with the antimony, uh, carbon graphite mixed with antimony carbon uh, graphite uh, been used as a solid lubricant where the antimony is been used as a to increase the conductivity to increase the impact resistance. But problem with uh, this kind of um, seal rings or this kind of a block uh, solid lubricant is that if there is a wear you can see the wear marks on that. If there is a wear then um, their internet function will not be fulfilled then is they will start uh, losing the antidote function and that will turn out to be a failure. So, we need to use some other mechanism. So, that there is a self healing uh, property comes in this kind of uh, block lubricant also. This is uh, not a coated is a complete one block and one way is that you push uh, with a spring. So, wherever there is a wear and getting pushed with a helical spring again uh, regain its position even though wear out. Uh, thickness is uh, decreasing, but it is uh, coming back to the same position. This is uh, what uh, one diagram shows a seal ring. Uh, this is uh, what we call a rotary joint complete unit. You can see the steam goes in and uh, try to push this kind of a stainless, st uh, stainless steel shafts. There is uh, one stationary joint, another rotating joint and this these are the seal rings this is a radial kind of a seal ring and this is another uh, seal ring which I showed in a previous slide. This is a seal ring which we are talking about the wear out of happens and if there is a leakage of steam then there is a loss of the fluid or required fluid that we require to stop it. Now, if there is a seal ring uh, uh, is getting wear or uh, worn out or uh, there is a wear of the seal ring there is a spring on it which pushes the shaft against that. If the thickness of the seal ring is reduced because we have already used a pre compressed spring, it will adjust position of the seal ring. So, that means, uh, uh, if we are using a solid lubricant as a one block, there should be some arrangement which gives a self healing uh, property to the solid lubricant, otherwise it will be a failure. Always, if we do not use this kind of a spring and use a seal ring, maybe say after a couple of hours, the seal ring will uh, wear out and then intended function will not be fulfilled and the leakage will start. So, within a couple of hours, we need to remove the seal ring and we need to replace with a new one, which will be very tedious. Opening and uh, uh, closing this kind of assembly itself take a number of hours. So, if uh, operating life of the seal ring is only few hours then it does not have any meaning or, or we should not be uti utilizing uh, this kind of seal ring that is why we use uh, this kind of uh, adjustment device which gives uh, overall uh, favorable results to us. So, another mechanism is that uh, use a uh, uh, solid lubricant as a thin film coating on the surface. Now, when we say thin film coating it has advantages. First thing is that it will not wear out very easily. It has been observed with a decrease in a thickness, their bonding strength increases significantly or it will not be shared out very easily, can sustain much higher load, can sustain a high fatigue load also with a thin film. So, depends on our applications, uh, we can use uh, this kind of coating. But only problem even the, this is that if there is a wear out then uh, intended function will be lost and will be we need to be very accurate or we need to be able to estimate properly when the wear will occur and before that 
we should be ready to replace this kind of uh, component. So, there is a one mechanism to use this kind of a coating. Of course, um, we can use a carrier fluid when we are relying on uh, this kind of a coating. We can use a carrier fluid on that along with uh, the solid lubricant. Now, one of the major um, um, group of the solid lubricant is a polymers. We say that uh, the polymers are uh, suitable to bear the light loads. If you apply a load with a high magnitude load, then um, they have a question of friction, but we know the question of friction um, into um, normal load will give the friction and that if the friction force is very high, rate of heat generation will be high rate of heat generation is high and they have poor dissipation. Heat dissipation on the thermal connected is very low then they will not be able to uh, dissipate the heat. There will be heat accumulation which will increase the temperature of the, these components and if the temperature uh, increases then there is a possibility of plastic flow of the, this kind of polymers which will lose its intended function or which will cause the loss of the intended function. That is why we say polymers should be used for the light load applications only and sometimes we use a polymer as a binding agents, right. So, PTFE is one of the well known uh, concept has been utilized in a number of uh, utensils um, by Ducom uh, um, of the DuPont company which is uh, one of the new uh, well known company for the PTFE DuPont uh, uh, which uh, gave the name as a Teflon. So, that the PTFE do not they do not use the word that PTFE they use a Teflon coating and uh, I, I remember I, we have done the Teflon coating on the cars also. So, it give a nice appearance we know that the uh, extra environment will not impose much load on the surface and uh, it has a shiny surface glossy surface. So, that kind of coatings are very good, but uh, major uh, thing is um, they have a poor addition to the metals. That is why they cannot be easily applied you need to rub it hard or apply more mechanical force to transfer polymers or PTFE from the block to the surface where we want to coat it. The issue is generally low coefficient of friction that is um, because of the they have a spherical molecules and a spherical molecular structure is uh, very advantageous because uh, they have easy gliding on the surface as well they have a low shear interface uh, shear strength uh, they make uh, interface with a low shear strength. However, they have a high wear rate their specific wear rate uh, is a 10 s to minus 4 and units are also mentioned here is the mm cube per minute. When we want to reduce the wear rate often we choose a nylon. Nylon is one of the most commonly used component in most of the uh, ties where the nylon bushes are used or uh, wherever uh, requires slightly higher hardness, slightly higher uh, life compared to this kind of wear rate obviously the lesser wear rate is required then we can use a nylon also easily available in an open market. However, the only disadvantage of the nylon uh, in place of the PTF is a high coefficient of friction. The coefficient of friction is 0.25. That means we lose uh, almost 2.5 times energy compared to the PTF. Again, we are using the word. They need to be uh, utilized only for the suitable uh, for the light load applications. Their specific wear rate is uh, lower by 10 to 100 times compared to the PTF. However, PTF has a major advantage of the coefficient of friction, and we don't want to lose it. That is why many times we use a synthetic polymers. PTFE is mixed with uh, some other polymers to retain the low coefficient of friction and high uh, life of the low wear rate. So, both low wear rate and low coefficient of friction by synthesizing by hybridizing with other uh, polymers or other components. That is why we are saying that uh, polymers uh, if it is a mixed uh, or is a PTFE is a mixed with a glass carbon or um, glass fibers they have uh, they increase the strength when they increase the strength the wear rate goes down. And uh, it has been observed the wear rate um, 
10 ounce to be only 10 to minus 7 or a specific we are to is 10 to minus 7 compared to 10 to minus 4 almost a thousand times increase in our life when we are using uh, synthetic polymers. This is uh, mentioned over here uh, if we do not want to uh, go ahead with a uh, uh, low uh, strength of the polymers we should uh, use uh, some sort of metal base. When uh, poly polymers or with a PTFE or Teflon they are applied on a, as a thin layer on the metal surface their strength goes uh, phenomenally high. Their strength is uh, almost equal to the metals if they are very thin or uh, they are applied with thin coating the few micron coating on the surface. They show very low coefficient of friction they show very high strength we get a uh, win win situation. And this has been already shown in a previous slide this figure if we apply a polymers if I assume this is a metal and this is a polymer they give very high life because uh, their strength is increased they can uh, sustain more load whatever uh, load is applied they will deform to some extent and deformation uh, possibilities are lesser because this is not a complete bulk polymers in the bulk polymer the deformation will be enormous but the thin coating of the polymers and the, the back is the support the support provides the, uh, reduces the uh, deflection and then this kind of coating can survive right however uh, still uh, there is a one problem even though the strength is increasing but thermal conductivity is not increasing that is why if we use a metal which has a very high thermal conductivity in that situation we will get a win win situation or in the we will get a both favorable uh, cases high thermal conductivity overall of this com, uh, uh, the layer, layer structure high strength and low friction that is a win win situation. Now, see the structure of uh, PTFE or what is called as the poly tetrafluoroethylene you can see they are all the balls we know the ball will roll easily right that is why they show very low interface uh, strength if the free surface has a this kind of a structure and um, the under compression um, they deform that is why if the um, coefficient of friction will increase with a increase in um, load that means they do not follow coulomb's law completely but to a light load application yes they follow as i and uh, this slide clearly indicates that uh, this name was uh, given by dupont at a teflon they do not use the word a ptfe they use a teflon that is a name given uh, the trade name and given by the this company. However, in this slide also we are trying to show what are the strength of a PTFE and what are the weaknesses of the PTFE right. Say PTFE does not uh, react easily with a number of substances. So, they have more chemical stability they remain in a same position same structure for a longer time or without uh, reacting without changing their structure they change the structure uh, under the load condition under the high temperature but not in a chemical environment right and uh, it has been mentioned that uh, they have uh, more inertness this is basically the ethylene and all the hydrogen bonds were replaced by the fluorine so that gives a very high chemical affinity uh, chemical stability to the uh, compound they have a low surface energy that is why that they show low coefficient of friction they have a low shear, shear strength of the interface and of course, uh, there is a low velocity is uh, permitted low wear rate is uh, also there. One of the interesting one of the major advantage uh, of a uh, Teflon or um, PTFE is a non toxic behavior can be mixed with the fruit and it will not harm to the body that is the reason why the most of the utensils are coated with the teflon they do not spoil the food they go show the low coefficient of friction. So, we can uh, uh, cook food with much lesser oil compared to what oil is required without uh, teflon coating and they can be can be used in a uh, number of pharmaceutical company uh, pharmaceutical applications this is a this is a, this is a major advantage of a PTFE. However, there are there are some weaknesses you say it is a soft so wear rate will be high and to reduce the wear rate we need to do something with a PTFE 
they have a poor creep resistance. So, another uh, reason why we use a PTFE with a metal base or we use uh, with uh, some uh, uh, support. They are uh, poor, uh, they have poor creep resistance if they are used in the bulk, but a few molecular thick layer or even a 0.5 mm thick layer will not show that bad uh, creep resistance or creep uh, behavior. Thermal conductivity is uh, low, that is why again we required uh, hybridization with uh, polymers or uh, other um, fibers or uh, metals which will increase uh, thermal conductivity. Now, this is a final uh, bad thing about uh, PTFE, you say the vacuum is uh, detrimental, they start vaporizing, they start uh, degassing the um, component. So, that is why they are not effective at uh, in particularly when they are used in uh, vacuum situations, that is why we cannot use this kind of solid lubricant in uh, extreme cases. Now, as I mentioned in previous slide, most of the disadvantages of PTFE, see advantages are very favorable, uh, but there are disadvantages and we need to do something after learning uh, what PTFE can do. Most of the disadvantages of PTFE can be overcome by using fillers to increase the strength by impregnating with the metals to increase the thermal conductivity and uh, we can say that it, uh, by synthesizing uh, these polymers right and it has been uh, also mentioned over here that by with a suitable uh, rigid uh, backing PTFE can withstand or uh, reduce the wear it can withstand high temperature load or high load that is uh, stress level can be even a 100 mega Pascal but maintaining is still a low coefficient of friction. When the coefficient of friction is consistent, what we are talking about the steady coefficient of friction and kinetic coefficient of friction, they are almost the same when we are using the PTFE. That is a major advantage of PTFE. If I talk about the liquid lubricants without sliding, without relative velocity, coefficient of friction will be high. That means, the steady coefficient of friction may be as high as 0.25 under dynamic condition, when the sliding is uh, started and the hydrodynamic film is uh, completely made, coefficient of friction reduces to 0 0.001, the huge difference between 0.25 and 0 0.001 that I am sure is going to give a stick steel phenomena, unless we support hydrodynamic action with some other action. Well, in case of the PTFA, they show the same static coefficient of friction and almost the same kinetic coefficient of friction, there is no variation. That is why we say that it is almost freedom from stick slip phenomena. That is why PTFE can be utilized. Of course, as I say, the PTFE alone cannot be utilized, it need to be mixed with uh, some fillers, need uh, some support for the so that uh, thermal conductivity is increased and uh, sustainability or uh, to resist the compressive force increases. Now, the finally, the coming as a uh, when two polymers in sliding contact should not be utilized. If I am using one polymer, I should use other metal. Reason being, when we are using polymers with a uh, interface of the metal or in the ceramic, polymer will get deposited to other surface itself. We will make a thin layer. So, if I use a two bulk uh, uh, polymers, it does not have much use. I use a one metal and one bulk, uh, bulk polymer, then it will have a better results. That is why this note comes is that two polymers in sliding contact will normally operate at significantly lesser speed than polymer against a metal surface. One is a metal has a high thermal conductivity and high sliding speed means uh, high friction uh, heat, high heat means uh, required high dissipation which in the case of the metal has, but otherwise it does not have. So, we say this kind of uh, polymers will be recommended when uh, we have um, low speed condition, when the uh, sliding speed is very low, then we can use the two polymers, but they turn out to be cheaper, they may be non toxic and can be utilized easily. But uh, sliding speed is uh, higher than we uh, required uh, by polymers, maybe so the few meter per second. In that case, so one polymer should be utilized with other uh, metal surface. But if sliding speed is almost negligible, then we can utilize our two polymers together. 
we will continue with the classification of a solid lubricant in our next lecture. Thanks for uh, your attention. Thank you. Mm -hmm.